Okay, good afternoon guys, uh, students. Uh, the purpose of, it, of this video is to give you like a step-by-step, -step, um, step-by-steps uh, homework or, or a job in order for you guys to understand how to retrieve information from the uh, AIA, uh, the uh, Firebase database and also uh, we will be f able to find information within the uh, Firebase database, okay? So let's start with this. Now the first thing I'm going to do is open our SAMP um, control panel and you can see I have my Apache already on. So if you don't, all you have to do is uh, start your project or uh, start your server, pu pushing the or clicking the button start, right? Okay, so the next step is create a new project. So remember, the SAMP, the SAMP uh, application is, is stored in C drive if you install it as in, um, if you install it, uh, with all the default functions or, or yeah, all the defaults. However, I, I storage in another place, so don't try to follow exactly the same um, address or the same location here in your computers because you might not be able to find it. Anyway, so I'm going to my SAMP folder. In my case, it's here, okay? And look for the folder hddocs, okay? Remember, as always, uh, that's where all the projects in terms of the Apache are stored or should be stored. So Apache can find any single project in this specific folder, okay? So inside the com uh, I create com206 folder already, as you may notice, you can create the com206 as well if you like. And I will, do it in the week eight. I will create a week eight, and here I will create a new folder called assignment three. Okay, now with that done, I'm going to my uh, NetBeans. Remember, the folder that you have to work with should be in the SAM folder, otherwise, it will be very hard for you to see if the application works or not. So here, uh, I'm going to collapse this guy over here and let's go to close it. So we can start fresh, right? So let's close this, okay. So let's go to create a new project, okay? Remember, if you don't have the HTML5 option, you have to go to install plugins and follow the step we've been doing so far, I mean before, okay? Now select the HTML5 GS application, click next, and in here I will call it assignment three. Now I'm going to browse this, uh, this location since it's not the location that I want to store all my project and go to the SAM folder, htdocs as well, okay? Come to a six in this case, week eight, and that's my folder. <laughs> Excuse me. So in there, just click open, and you will see I, I have repeated like assignment three, assignment three, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is actually select the week eight folder, and you see I will it will create the assignment number three folder for me. Okay, I call it assignment number three. Then next, no site template. Uncheck all these options, and then finish. It's a good practice always to see if everything has been uh, completed accordingly. So go back to your assignment three folder that is located in some HT docs uh, folder, come to a six folder, 
and then you see it is created accordingly. So how to access that? Well, the way to access this is just since my SAMP server is running, all you have to do is if you follow the same step as me, you have to look in your local host and then come to a six. Okay, so I find the week eight folder and inside assignment number three, public HTML, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. All right. Now, coming back to our IDE, the first thing that we want to do is actually create a phone book application where I can not only store information, but I will be able to search information in it. Okay, so let's go with it then. The first thing is basically uh, create our form, right? So we have an index HTML, which is created by our IDE automatically. So the first thing I have to do is get the jQuery library, right? As always. Now let's go to the jQuery. Whoops. Well, it seems like I found it <laughs> anyway. And click jQuery and remember to download the second file because it's the uncompressed development jQuery is for development okay now click there and follow or find the htdocs the htdocs folder inside the samp folder right samp htdocs come to a six in my case, week eight. You don't have to create that week eight, though. However, it's, it's like the way I arrange things in my computer, right? Assignment number three, public HTML, and that's where you're going to store your information. So save it there. And if you did it correctly, you will see your jQuery library displayed inside the side root, right? Now, uh, since I want to work with the Bootstrap project, I'm going to uh, look after the Bootstrap information. Okay. And it will give me some uh, examples for the form. So I, I don't have to start from scratch, right? So the first thing, as always, just copy the head section in the head section over here. Okay. Okay, I'm putting it like this just for arrangement purposes. In the first I mean and the next thing or the previous thing before closing your body you have to put this code over here according to the instructions, okay? Right before the closing body. So let's go to copy this and paste it over here. Right. So, but remember, Bootstrap is using the jQuery as well, but this version the, is not compatible with the functions we are going to use in this project. So you have to erase this line, okay? But since Bootstrap needs the jQuery as well in order to work uh, good, all you have to do is import this jQuery library to your uh, index file, okay? All you have to do is drag the file over here and it will be written by for you uh, automatically. Now, for formatting purposes, I'm just going to click a little bit enters here, in here, oops, sorry. And, uh, Okay, and the cross region as well, and that's it. So if you are having formatting pr uh, problems in terms of the indention of these elements, all you have to do is Control A, select everything, and then Alt A, Shift F, and everything will be arranged for you. Okay, so in Bootstrap, here we have a layout, no content, no components in forms I have a form already done for me okay so I'm going to copy all of this okay 
And before pasting it, I have to create a division, division which is a container. Whoops, sorry. A division. Okay. Which I uh, class will be equal to container. Okay. This is used by Bootstrap in order to arrange things better. So just leave it over there like this and then paste it inside the form that you just copied from the internet from the Bootstrap site. So remember, Control A and then Alt Shift F in order to arrange things. Okay. Now we have the first label. I'm going to ask for the name. Okay, full name. Okay, so the type of this will be a text. I don't have any requirements on this. And uh, what else? Yeah, so I'm going to erase this guy. I need this. And I'm going to give label for name. Okay, so I have the name here. And enter full name. Okay. Now I'm going to raise this a small guy because I don't, I don't need this extra information, right? Now the next thing to do is for address. Okay, for address, let's go to use the uh, lower case. I'm going to put here the address and type text it's a class form control ID is not um, this long name anymore but it will be address and placeholder please enter enter address okay now I don't need that checkbox I need the button though because remember, as the previous assignment, we will use it for submitting the information, not submitting the information, sorry, but to switch me to the other page. So I'm, as always, basically this is my form. I'm going to put uh, probably a name, right? Uh, uh, an introduction for this. So this would be at phone book, phone book app. And I will close my little guy over here. Application. So remember to save. And let's see how it looks. Well, it seems very appealing to me. I'm going to put a space here. Okay. And yeah, that's better. Okay. So that's good enough. Now let's go to create the Java, the jQuery section, the Ajax section, so we can store information into our uh, database, right? So, okay. All right. S anyway, so in this submit, the, 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 before doing that, well, we can get that later, but I'm going to change, just in case I forgot, let's go to change this guy as a bottom, because I don't want this to be submitted immediately, I hit the bottom, because I need to give some time to the Firebase to answer me back, and then I will be changing the address or the uh, HTML file then only when I finish uh, doing the saving right that's the purpose now um, since I'm going to use uh, a script over here I have to put the element script remember to close it all the time okay it's a very it's a best practice to do it otherwise you might be confused whenever the script start or finish so always open the script and close the script okay As always do it like that now 
in here, I'm going to use my jQuery as before in class, but in this case, remember the little trick we learned regarding to the documentation. Whenever it's ready, okay, I'm going to do a function. Okay. Now, that's where all my logic will be performed. So let's see if it works. I'm going to put a console log, okay? And I will put here, hello, hello world, okay? This is for make sure everything is working perfectly in terms of the jQuery and in terms of my formatting and everything, okay? So save your project, go back to the phone application and then reload it and open your developer tools. So you see the hello world is displaying perfectly. That means it's working as expected. Now, in the console, I can erase this because I, I tested it and it's working perfectly. So I'm expecting to do what? Right now, I'm going to create a function. However, this specific um, a script won't be used in this specific page. I always create it automatically whenever I want to use jQuery, but I just realized I'm going to call this uh, function or the function that we are going to create using the button. So it's not necessary to use this because anything will work or nothing will be triggered until I push this button. So there is no point to actually uh, performing any single operation before or after the page is loaded. So I can create directly my function from here. Now let's go to create a function that I will call a store information. Yeah, a store information. Okay. Now I won't use any arguments, so I leave the uh, curly braces empty. And I mean the uh, parentheses empty, and I put the curly braces accordingly, as always, right? Using JavaScript. Now the thing is, I want to perform a logic over here, including AJAX. So whenever I push this button, I will perform this store information. So in order to do that, all I have to do is on click equal to. Uh, a store information or or you can basically create your um, event handler in this section over here for this button it's the same thing so for now let's go to leave it as it is okay so now I'm going to, um, you know what, let's go to erase this, let's go to erase this, and I'm going to do it using the document ready function. So I will be looking, first of all, let's go to put a name for my bottom, which will be a uh, submit, submit button, okay, save this. And here I'm going to use my Ajax. I'm sorry, my, my sorry, my jQuery to make a reference on the bottom, which is submit bottom. Okay. And remember the function on. That's the responsible of giving event handler, assign event handlers to any element inside your uh, web page. Now on. I will be using the click event handler. So whenever I click the button, something will be performed. And I will call the function, sorry, I forgot to put the comma here. Okay. And inside I will use my very well known curly braces. So let's see if the, the button is working. A button clicked okay 
okay so let's save it let's start this and in here just click submit and you should be displayed a uh, this uh, a specific message to from the uh, from the code anyway so we have it worked so but instead of creating a console or, or creating a message from the console what I want to do is to call this function over here so I'm going to put here a store information awesome now just to see if it works button clicked a store mm, function used okay just to make sure it's working I always do it like that I know it's time consuming but make sure everything is working perfectly right a store function uh, used okay perfect now we have this working awesomely now let's go to use the AJAX for communicating to my server remember the first step the first step is the uh, URL okay so the URL will be the URL from the Firebase database right so let's go to my uh, Firebase site and click over there remember you don't need you have to you must have a gmail account in order to get this uh, this uh, application working all right so let's go to a star sorry for the language I think it's auto detecting my language and uh, let's go to use the this com206 database that already created remember in order to if you don't have a database all you have to do is create a database and you will be prompted over here just give the name that you want and click in database okay and remember always always look for the rules and rules have to be written like this okay so in order to make sure the database will be able to read the information I mean every single user that tries to read information from this specific database will will do it okay will be able to do it and to write the same thing so any single user who has the uh, specific uh, uh, address of this specific database will be able to write into it this is only for developing okay uh, this is not the best way to do it for production purposes however remember we are developing here so we need everything open in order to make sure the application or the core of the application is working properly now let's go back to data and in here I can see the address of my database that's what you have to copy okay copy this and let's put it into the URL remember to give always a name this is for the database know where exactly this information will be stored therefore I will be using assignment number three dot JSON because it will be a JSON file okay and uh, or a JSON item and it will be stored at JSON dot JSON extension file up there in the Firebase database so remember to use the comma here always to separate the properties we will use another property over here we will uh, we have to use a comma remember this is a simple Java script object so this is a property URL that Ajax needs in order to work uh, correctly so now let's go to put the method or the type sorry okay which will be a post method okay because that's the type of the uh, the method that the Firebase requires okay now we have the type the data type the data type 
will be the data type that I will be sending and in this case will be JSON okay and now the data the data will be exactly what is stored in these guys now the data that we are going to get is from these guys over here right yeah those inputs now let's go to uh, create our uh, JSON object over here so the data will be a function okay a function that will call the JSON library and stringify stringify the information that I'm going to put over here now remember since it's a Java object, a JavaScript object, I have to use the same idea over here, all the properties down. Now let's go to C. We have the name attribute. So that will be probably name. Okay. And remember to use the jQuery for accessing that information, which is the uh, ID name. So in this case, the identifier, the selector will be name and the value of it okay comma and the address address mm -hmm. the selector will be address dot file which will retrieve the file of my address uh, input right now I finish with this and I will put another thing over here. No, it has to be after these curly braces. These curly braces, right? And as a success, I'm going to use a function that will get the data, which will basically the response from the uh, database and I will put the console log and I will display the data if everything is done perfectly I will get some sort of a response from the server and if it's an error I'm going to use a function as well and I will display in the console that error console dot log and that error and that's pretty much it. Remember to close this as a semicolon. It's not going to be a fatal error, but it's going to throw you a warning, right? Okay, I think it's done. Let me check. So let's test it. Let's test it. Let me save it and go back to your form. Okay, so in here I will put Lewis in an address 1234, green, evergreen. 34 evergreen mm -hmm. whatever I don't know and submit this oh it's giving me an error uh, let me check what the error is okay so it's like a bad request mm. Let me check data type data function. Let's go to check if this before. So this is interesting. It's saying bad request, right? And let's go to try to solve it. So I'm going to check if this guy over here is working perfectly so I'm going to copy this paste it over here and I'm going to call it a variable var temp just to make sure this is uh, this is going good I'm going to comment this for now and I'm going to console.log the temp variable. Okay. 
Now let's see if it's work. If it's working. So I'm going to put anything and anything over here and yep. The JSON is correct. So I know now this is perfect. Okay. So it's telling bad request. Uh probably this should be methods. Okay. Maybe it, I made a mistake. Check. Where's my address? Submit. Temp is not defined. Temp. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to put everything back to normal. I just comment, uncomment this and erase everything because I wanted to test the JSON um, uh, object which was working perfectly so let's see if it's working now okay where's my address okay it's giving you keep going the error now let's see uh, well it seems like this guy over here is working perfectly but I think I made a mistake in the function it, this shouldn't be a function so I'm going to erase this guy over here and don't forget to erase the curly braces as well so that means all I have to put is this okay so I'm going to put this everything back into place and select everything formatting and with this I believe will work let's check let's check it and uh, I'm going to reload it and Louis, my address. Yep, it worked. Was basically this error. I did it automatically. Sorry for the confusion, guys, but it it is proving you actually the video was done in in. Uh, it, it's good that these things happens because it help us to understand and how to solve problems right away on the spot, right? Anyway, so I think it's done for now and uh, let's go to now since it's a, we know the success I'm displaying the data and now I can give this form that I will give a name uh, the ID for this form will be uh, phone form okay now let's go to uh, use the jQuery in the success section in this encapsulation area here or encapsulated area and I will call it uh, font form dot submit okay so I will give the action so it will go to the specific um, page that I want so I will call this phone book dot HTML which I haven't created yet right so let's see if it works so after the success I will the data will be displayed and then this form will be submitted okay I'm not going to use any of the information uh, used over here however uh, because I using uh, J, uh, jQuery or dollar Ajax Ajax for that purpose, right? So let's see if it works. And uh, I'm going to reload this. Lewis, my address to hit submit. And it seems like it's not working properly because it's not. Oh, I forgot the hashtag symbol. Okay. So let's go to relate it, reload it. And Lewis, my address three submit yep it, it is working it's giving me an error because I don't have I, I haven't created this phone book HTML yet okay that's fine now let's go to create another uh, HTML5 file and in this opportunity will be called phone call a, a phone book HTML okay awesome 
just hit finish and then we have our starting point from our HTML now let's go back to index I want to check one thing yeah so basically whenever I receive this page I should be what I should be reading the information and display it accordingly but I'm going to use this form over here because I want to use a form I don't have to use a form when I'm working with Ajax only right but it's the best way to do it. I mean, it's a, it's a good way to arrange things. Anyway, so I'm going to copy this form because I don't want to start over from the other form that has a lot of information, right? Go back to phone book. And in body, I'm going to paste that form. And I will put remember to use, sorry, uh, remember to use the div container. Okay. equal to you know what what we're going to do is you know what I'm going to erase everything right go back to index select everything oops and select everything and copy it and paste it in for book because basically we are going to use several things that are done over here including the bootstrap the jQuery reference the bootstrap reference over here so basically it's the same thing right now, but instead of phone book application, I will put here phone addresses, okay? And I'm going to put here, okay, let's leave this for now like this. And whenever I click the button, I will, instead of submit button, I will call it search button. Search button, okay? and I will hit here search because I want to search among my phone book what addresses or what name in this case for by name right by name so I would like to search by name and uh, whoever wants the the or has that name a specific name I uh, will be shown in my uh, list result list okay so the uh, other thing I have to create here is a division which will be uh, an ID of result okay and close the division remember always do this otherwise you might find yourself in a very confusing application all the way always open and close the elements as uh, along you are creating them okay now uh, instead of submit button I'm going to use what button the search button okay and instead of the storing I will be searching search information so search information for this function okay now it's faster this way right so always try to replicate your job or your work if it applies of course and uh, okay now let me check let me check what else we have here mm, 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 mm. okay so I'm going to use only one input by the way because it's only one input required so uh, search by name search by name mm -hmm. enter the name enter the name you want to look enter the name for searching okay all right now it seems like it's working perfectly and uh, I check so right now the 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 URL will be the same right because it's, it's that's where all my information is being stored and we can go back to the Firebase and check that see there is an assignment 3 created and if you click there are four items already because they are all the all the times that I've been clicking clicking to uh, to 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 test my application right so let's see let's go back and instead of posting now I'm using the get method and the data type probably will be JSON right so but instead of stringify 
and uh, no, in this case we are not going to use data because we are not posting anything, right? So, but I'm getting, I'm getting JSON information from here. So remember, whenever I reach the data, since we are working with the Firebase database, I'm going to create a new var variable that I will call results, and this will be equal to uh, the map. data dot map probably uh, no, it seems like it's not like that no, it's not like that so let's go to use the jQuery probably is there oh yeah so the array now I'm going to use the array which is in this case data and I'm going to use a function right with a variable that is called key and inside there I will return key okay and that will give me the results of my variable so before continuing I want to check if this is working so right now if I go into this specific page, everything should be shown. So I'm going to use the console log to display my results. Always do it like that, so you are making sure you are doing a correct step for getting your application done. So save this, save this, and go back to the application. So I'm going to reload this and it seems like it's not getting the information because it's not I'm not getting any information from here so let's see mm -mm -mm. let me check the data if I'm getting information Let, let's first to see if I'm getting information it seems like I'm not getting anything mm, that's weird method get data type JSON success data and uh, let me check one thing probably this function is making me an error nope it's not that it's not giving me an error so it seems like something missing here so it seems like something is missing right and uh, let's check let's go to check these names okay that's the error so basically I was trying to do something that I was expecting to be automatic and the second error is actually the bottom is misspelled and uh, but l I'm going to put it here so whenever it's finished I'm going to display the information so remember control A Alt Shift F. Okay, now save it and let's go back to our application. So let's see. Okay, I'm getting the information. Perfect. Now it's working. Okay, let's go to put it back into its place. Okay, Control A, Alt Shift F. Okay, save it. Okay, let's see so far I'm going to uncomment this guy over here so it seems like it's working now so let's make sure it's working okay so I have to get a oh I have to click this button in order to make this function work okay so let's go back and click the button yep everything is restored or or, or uh, all the information uh, is gotten from the uh, the proper uh, database accordingly what we are expecting okay awesome now we are getting there now uh, now the first thing this is a search application right search search by name enter the name for searching right so but in the in at the beginning 
I'm going to display everything inside this results uh, division. Okay. Now, but for that, let's go to give an event handler for my specific input over here. We did that in class, but we are going to review it again. So let's go to use the jQuery as always. And I'm going to use, I'm sorry. I'm going to assign the selector will be, I don't remember the name. Okay, name. So hashtag name. And the own function, right? So I want to add the click event handler and I will give the specific function that I want to do. In this case, uh, not click, sorry. It's not click because I'm not expecting to be click. I, I am expecting to input something. So whenever the user inputs something, I'm going to do something, okay? Now, oh, but we are using the search button as well. So, well, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm not going to use the search button. I'm going to use the, like a dynamic, dynamic thing. So for searching more dynamic and more fancy uh, uh, lookup into your phone addresses, right? Anyway, so I'm going to right now, let me think. Okay, let's go to create a function here, okay? And inside the curly braces, as always, I'm going to put the search information. Okay, so basically what I did was create an event handler for the input with the tag name name. And the event handler that it will be assigned will be the input. So whenever I put a single letter over there, I will be performing what? Searching information. Okay, but before doing that, let's go to test it if it works. So I'm going to console.log and I will display whatever is inside that a specific, oops, that a specific element whenever I click something, right? If I type something, sorry. So I'm going to check what the value is. I'm doing this just for the sake of s seeing if the, the code is working properly. So I'm going to select everything. Alt Shift F. Okay. Now, uh, let's save it and go back to our application. So let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working perfectly. Okay, awesome. Uh, let's go back to our code. So this is working perfectly. So I will now, okay, I have a comment over here, but I have to give this value to the certain information, right? Because I should know or should implement a logic over here in this success section. So whenever I get the information, I should be able to do some logic to look after the values inside that results array remember this is our array and i can i can actually retrieve all the information accordingly so let's see let's see how to do that so i know my function is star information but right now i'm not giving any information to it so basically what is returning is returning everything right so but now i want to give this value over here which is basically the value of my input at the moment I enter a single key stroke inside my input. So that is very useful to do it dynamically. I'm going to uh, delete this because I'm not going to need it anymore. And uh, I'm going to erase this one as well because I'm going to erase the bottom. Whoops, I erased too much. Okay, perfect. Now, it's better this way. Okay, so I'm going to erase this button. I'm not going to use it. Or no, let's leave it over there, but I'm going to use another. I'm going to give another use for this guy. Let's leave it for the moment. 
Now, uh, okay, so let's see if it works. If it works, oh, before that, remember I gave in what? An, uh, a value over here, right? Which is a string. So I have to receive that value in here. That's what the argument is for. So I'm going to give the results and also I'm going to display the input to see if it's working according to what is expected, okay? So let's see. Okay, so whenever I click, yeah, it's working awesomely and it's awesomely fast actually. Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, now let's go back to our code and let's go to make the search over here and be displaying accordingly. So we know it's a, an array, right? So I would like to get the information from it. So I'll, I'm going to check if these results, oh, before, before going this way, we have to search for every single item inside my database, right? So the first thing, or inside my array, the first thing to do is uh, for each item, okay? Which will give me the item and the index. We have used this function before. And, uh, okay. So right now, what I'm trying to do here is basically, hmm, it's giving me an error, why? Yeah, expected comma, put down semicolon. Yeah, but I haven't finished. Yeah. Yeah, let me check what is happening here. Hmm. Let me check one thing. That's weird. Results dot for each oh oh yeah yeah my mistake was the uh the parentheses sorry about that okay so uh in here i'm going to use a function actually it returns a function and i will give the index and i'm sorry the item and the index according to the documentation if you don't remember that uh i should be able to give documentation you see is input but actually it's not giving you any documentation about that well anyway so I know it's using a function right in the item comma the index of it and now that's where my color braces go okay I'm going to use a semicolon here and return key this is another warning I hate warnings Okay, so right now for each, every single item inside my database, okay? Now, what I want to do with that? Well, I'm going to check if the item, what is the property that I will be looking for? Okay, let's go back to our site and Firebase. You see, there are two specific properties, the name and the address, and I want to check for the name, okay? So in this case, item and name, okay, item name, dot includes, okay? And what is going to be included? Well, it will include whatever the input is, this input over here. So you have to type input here. So that means this input which is a variable that I'm inserting from here which is the value that is inside the element uh, will be let's say given from here to here to th this input and it will be assigned to the input variable so that is okay if I try to get the includes with the input variable which is equal to the value inside my element okay so I use the curly braces again because it's a function. Oops, sorry. 
Uh, yeah, it's outside. Sorry about that. And uh, yeah, and if this item dot name, which is the property of my object, right, includes input, and then do something. So let's go to. Right now, I'm going to console dot log and give what the item dot name okay so let's see if it works now if I go back to my to my database to my application if I hit L so it's returning for Louis so it's kind of confusing let's go back and Command these two guys. Let's go to erase them. I don't need them. We checked that already. It is working perfectly. So right now let's see all the items that has Lewis or L or whatever, right? So let's go back and whenever I type let's say U, well there are four items inside my phone book or inside my database that has Lewis. Okay? And it seems like it's working perfectly. Now the other the last thing to do is creating those results and put it here in this division. For that I'm using a list item. So let's go back to bootstrap and let's go to layout no content, no utilities probably. Let's go to type it here list. Okay? And that's what I'm looking for, a list. Okay, so he's using an order of the list and inside the order of the list, the list item class list. Okay, I'm going to copy this and put it in the results. So in this case, okay, control A, Alt Shift F. And this guy over here shouldn't be the one that I call results, right? Why? Because results will be all this division but I want to insert only in here so that it will make more sense if I call this guy results instead of calling this guy here so I don't have to refer the this division and then refer to this um, unordered list that doesn't make sense at all now let's go to uh, whenever it gets instead of putting the name I'm going to retrieve the name and the address all right in a in a very appealing way so let's see one thing oh yeah I'm going to uh, let's check so yeah I'm going to use the dollar sign again and and the first thing we are going to do is okay remember this the first thing we have to do is cleaning whatever is inside these results here because remember I don't want to everything to be appended uh, uh, dynamically right so what I have to do is clean first so the hashtag results and use the HTML and just leave it in blank so that will rewrite everything that is inside here and it will basically wipe everything up okay yeah so that's correct yes that, that's fine so I'm going to put here also the message of the list item this list item like this okay what is that? Okay, perfect. I'm going to use the single quotes. And uh, yeah, it seems like no result found. All right. Now let's see if it works. So I'm going to use a single letter that I'm totally sure that I don't have anything oh I have to erase that as well you're right go to save it 
so I'm putting W and no result found is appearing because I don't have anything with W, right? And uh, that is why it's working perfectly, not result found. Excellent. Now I'm going to give, uh, just for formatting purposes, I'm going to give an, a space over here, probably an align as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Now I'm going to use this if item to give everything I need, especially the no result and uh, whatever. And uh, let's see. So right now I'm looking for the item name includes input. So everything is done now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to use this exactly the same selector. And but in this time I will append because I don't want to wipe everything up. I just want to append information in this in this uh, section, right? So I'm going to append. And what I'm going to append? Well, basically it's this. It's this information, but I'm going to change it a little bit. So, up to here is perfect. So I'm going to close my single quote here, and I'm going to close it over here. So I'm going to use a plus sign here and a plus sign here. Okay. So whatever is inside here will be displayed as well. So I'm going to use name, right? and plus sign it will be the item dot name right plus uh, address in whatever the address is item dot address that's pretty much that's pretty much it I think we're done if it works, of course. So let me check what is warning me here for. Oh, I forgot the semicolon. Perfect. Now I'm going to just for formatting purposes, and you should have it like this. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to save this guy over here. And yep. So if I have an L, so it's showing me no result found. Hmm. An unexpected no result found here. So I think the best thing to do before doing the S append, not the for each, right? For each if the item Yeah, basically this code shouldn't be here. It should be here. I think it makes more sense. So let's see if it works. Let me use the W, no result found. Awesome. Now if I put the L, hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, but I can use an else statement. No, because the uh, if I use the else statement, it's gonna it's not gonna work exactly what I'm expecting. So what I'm using is uh, you know what for this purpose, I'm going to create another var, and I will use the found equal to false. I think it's the best approach. Okay, now. If I found something here, if I found something here, I will give the found a true. Okay. Control A, F. All right. Now, I'm going to use another if here. So if found. Remember, I don't have to type equal to true like this. Equal to true, because in this case, uh, it's understood that whenever found becomes true, it will fire the if statement. So I will, if it's true, if it's not true, I'm sorry, if it's false, then I will be displaying 
this guy here. So basically what I'm doing here is whenever this goes through and not even a single value was, has been found, I will perform this guy over here. I don't use an else if because if I found in the item number one but I didn't find it in the item number two, it will fire again. So you will have like a weird behavior there. So that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for showing dynamically to tell the user, hey, this is not, uh, I haven't found your information, the information that you're looking for. So in this case, let's go to save this and reload it. Let me check. No result found. Perfect. So if I come in back and everybody is, then I have to leave before in order to clean up, cleaning up the results. It's been kind of tricky, huh? <laughs> now, okay. So I wipe everything up and I think that is done. Okay, let me check. So if I put the W, no result found. Hmm. No result found. Oh, because no, but it should find true. Mm hmm. No result found. Okay, let me check one thing. If I type L, no result found. Okay. So it's giving me. Oh, that's the error. It's over here in this line. I shouldn't have this. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't see it before. Now let's go back. Should work now. So if I put W, no result. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seems like it doesn't want to work with me today. So I have to wipe everything up. And uh, so basically, it's not working exactly what I was expecting to because it's typing, it's appending all the information. Okay, now let's see, the, let's analyze this. So basically, it seems like oh my gosh, look at this, what we have done. Basically, I'm using this logic every single time. That is why. And this shouldn't be here. This should be outside the for each, right? Right here. Now, let's see. Let, let's go back. What What's happening is basically I was doing it for every single item. So what it was happening was like uh, I was checking. Okay, the f found is true. Then uh, okay, let's go back to. Let's go and if it's false, then I will display the HTML. So it was happening all the time, 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 and I wasn't really cleaning the whole thing. So let's see if it works. Let's see. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure it's going to work anyway. So let's go to see Lewis. Perfect. So basically the only thing that is missing here is whenever I type something else, I should be able to clean everything. But it seems like a result is not doing that. Let me check one thing. If I W. Oh, I see. So probably I have to type something like this. Let me check like this. Okay. Now let's see. W, no. Yep. Okay, now it's perfect. The the thing that I was missing is those double uh quotes as symbol because uh I have I wasn't sending anything to the HTML function. That is why it was giving me that error. Anyway, so it seems like uh, now it's almost perfect, almost perfect. The last step is doing this. Look at this. It works for L, right? But what if I use this? 
Well, it seems like it's not correct because I use uppercase. The problem with this includes function is the fact that it takes everything literally. So if it's an uppercase and it, the item doesn't have an uppercase, then it won't show up because it's not exactly the same thing, right? Now, in order to do that, I have to use the function string check a string probably lowercase so let's go to let's go to find some information here so lowercase string for JavaScript to lowercase is a function so that's exactly what I'm looking for you see a string lowercase now how to use that okay so I'm using the includes right but before I want to make it lowercase that's the trick so to lowercase since it's a function and that includes what is that what happened okay sorry and that includes the input but the input has to be what in lowercase dot to lower case okay so basically I'm taking the variable item name which is a string okay and giving lower case to that variable and that variable I'm asking okay those includes this value over here which is in lower case as well so it doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case, it will retrieve all the information desired. All the desired information, sorry. So let's go to save this. Let's go back here and let's try it. With capital, works perfectly. Now let's go to lower. Now it's working. Let's go to go with all capitals. Yep, it's working perfectly. Okay, now let's see if it works without another name, with another name, sorry. And uh, I'm going, to, oh, I have to give a function for this button, right? So this button in this case will be the, a sec. So anyway, lo, so let's go to see one thing. Um, okay, so it seems like it's working. Okay, I have to give this function to this button. So in this case, if I click the search button, I'm going to use the search button. I'm going to call the function go home. <laughs> go home. Okay. Now I haven't created yet. In that function, I will write that function over here, go home. Basically what it will do is, why is giving me that error? Oh, because I haven't, I forgot the function, go home. And here I will put the window href dot location sorry location dot href and I will give the location which is index dot html close it and let's see if it works. So I'm going to call here uh, home. Oh, this is not ID. That's wrong. Uh, input. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm going to change this guy over here to. No, 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 no. That's okay. And uh, go home. On click, I don't need this ID anymore. On click, go home. Okay, let's see if it works. So if I click home, it's not a function. Oh, because I've been using it as a function. Sorry about that. It's a property actually. Uh, it's right. Okay, now let's go back, reload this thing. If I click home, I'm getting back home. 
so let's go to get another button so I don't okay but before that let's go to put here uh, let's go to create another button here so I can go directly to the phone book addresses so I'm going back to index and in index look I'm working in index okay not in phone book in index okay so in index I will add another button and I will call this button phone addresses okay and I will go to phone address or probably phone address and on click on click is equal to go phone address mm -hmm. and I will give a function here uh, go phone address and the same idea window dot location dot href equal to uh, phone book dot html alright so let's see if it works uh, I'm going to reload this phone address home phone address home phone address perfect very neat huh so I'm going to give the uh, let's do mic in 12 tw 200 200 evergreen whatever the address is so meet the guy so let's go to see mic yeah mic is working and well since I have everything empty it will bring everything of course and uh, let's go to try Lois yeah it's working Th nothing has a comma mic I look at how interested all of them actually has an I what about the S only Lois is, has S well, let's see J for example no one has J now this is pretty much so the next step that you have to do is wrap everything up into a zip file exactly what I'm going to show you how I'm going to show you the first thing is make sure it's saved so close this guy go back to where your class I'm sorry week 8 assignment 3 public HTML all you have to do is select those three guys right click send to compress file and put your ID whatever your ID is okay and that's it submit this single file to the assignment section okay well guys that's pretty much everything for this assignment so I hope you enjoy it as I did doing it and every single question just let me know you have until uh, the next week you have a week for a complete this assignment and if you have any question just mail mail, mail um, send me an email